If you've clicked on this video, you're most probably planning or preparing for a trip down under to the wonderful city of Sydney. And if that's the case, let me be the first to welcome you to our beautiful city. The city of Sydney offers up unbeatable picturesque views, stunning beaches, as well as a melting pot of cuisines and cultures. However, if it's your first time to Sydney and or to Australia, then there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. And in this video, I will be covering exactly that. Call me your unofficial tour guide. I will be dividing my tips into four distinct sections which will address some of the most frequently asked questions by people who are visiting Sydney for the very first time. And this includes, what is the best time to visit Sydney? What do I need to prepare before coming to Sydney? What do I need to know while navigating myself around Sydney? And what are some cheap and free things that I can do and eat while in Sydney? And so without further ado, let's get straight into it. Here are 13 things that you absolutely need to know before traveling to Sydney. And the first three things I will talk about incidentally should be factors that you want to collectively take into consideration when planning for your best time to visit Sydney. Starting with weather, you might already know that Sydney has four seasons, a summer, autumn, spring, winter, but what you may not know is that our seasons are the inverse of the other countries in the Northern Hemisphere. We actually start off our year with summer, which takes place from December to February. Yes, we actually have hot Christmases, which we spend doing plenty of outdoor activities such as barbecue parties and sunbathing at the beach. It can get a bit intense heat-wise though, so if that's not your vibe, then perhaps you would like to visit in autumn instead, which happens around March to May. This is then followed by winter, which happens from June to August, which is then preceded by my favorite season of the year, spring, which happens from September to November. Spring is where the temperatures start to rise again post-winter, but are not yet at the scorching heat levels of summer. All you really need is a light jumper. Of course, you might want to take potential crowds into consideration, and generally speaking, this means that you want to avoid school holidays, Christmas and New Year periods. Here is the school holiday schedule for Sydney, New South Wales. I've also included this in my description box so that I can edit that in case anything changes. The best times for you to visit Sydney from a weather perspective would be autumn and spring which happens from March to May and September to November respectively. Once you take the school holidays into consideration though, autumn seems to be the overall best time for you to visit Sydney. That might all be negligible though if you are planning your trip around an event. And if you are planning to do just that, here are some of the more popular events other visitors base their trips around. Starting with the New Year's Eve fireworks, I mean it doesn't get more iconic than witnessing the New Year's Eve fireworks up close and personal against a backdrop of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. Vivid is Sydney's yearly festival of lights that occurs around the end of May to early June. The 2024 dates have been confirmed to be from the 24th 4th of May to the 15th of June. There are plenty of things to do at the Vivid Festival. Whilst the program changes every year, you can definitely get a very good idea of what to expect by checking out my 2023 coverage of the Vivid Festival, which I've collated as a playlist in my description box. Mardi Gras is Sydney's annual Pride celebration and generally occurs around February to March. The 2024 dates are February 9th to 13th. Okay, so you've locked down your visiting dates to Sydney and now need to prepare for your trip. That's what this next section is for. If you're like me, you're going to want to look into staying connected while traveling and whilst you can definitely get local prepaid SIM cards upon arrival at the Sydney airport, if your phone has an eSIM slot, I would actually recommend you try out ALO instead. eSIM is a function that most phones have today. It gives your phone the ability to add a virtual SIM card with mobile data. ALO is an app that you can use to purchase such virtual SIM cards of the country you are traveling to. As you can see for Australia, you can choose from 1 gigabyte of data for seven days from just four dollars and fifty cents all the way up to 20 gigabytes for 30 days for forty dollars you will also earn cash every time you purchase an eSIM as you can see I've got six dollars in there ALO has coverage in over 200 countries so it is definitely worthwhile downloading if you're traveling on a regular basis it is also super simple to install and use simply download the app create an account purchase the eSIM data plan you desire Desire and it is basically a one-click to install. As a frequent user of ALO, I can actually give you a $3 off your first eSIM data pack purchase. Simply enter my referral code, which I've also included in the description box when making your purchase. You're welcome. 
As with most people who are visiting Sydney, you will most probably be staying very close to the city or its surroundings and or close to one of Sydney's most popular beaches, Bondi Beach, which is located in the eastern suburbs. With that in mind, here's an array of accommodation options for you to choose from depending on your budget and who you're traveling with. Airbnb will be your best option if you're traveling with family or in a group of at least five people so that you can all share the costs. However, if you're traveling solo or in a smaller group with some budget constraints or really just want to save your money to use on other things, then a youth or backpacker hostel would be your next best bet. There are several websites that you can go to to research the youth hostel that best suits your budget and plans and I have of course included them in my description box. You can also also always find a good deal on websites such as Agoda and Expedia. I am actually a regular on Expedia and can personally recommend it in terms of finding hotel rooms at pretty competitive prices. In the era post-pandemic, it always pays to be aware of the latest health and safety precautions before you travel to any country or city. For Sydney and the greater New South Wales, I highly recommend for you to bookmark the New South Wales government link for international arrivals, which I have included here and to check it before traveling. As of the time of writing for this video, however, travelers arriving in New South Wales are no longer required to test for COVID-19 before departure or after arrival. Masks are also not mandatory in airports, cruise terminals, and on public transport in New South Wales. Imagine for a second that you've planned the perfect trip and you've now arrived in Sydney. Here are some things you need to know that will help you navigate yourself around town like a local. Starting with how to get from the airport to your accommodation. If you're flying into Sydney internationally, you will end up at Sydney's busiest airport, International Terminal 1. The airport is a mere 8 kilometers from the Sydney CBD and there are two main ways to get into the city. Which one you choose will depend on your budget, time constraints, how much luggage you have and who you're traveling with. You can for example catch a cab or call an Uber which is the quickest option and probably most relevant if you're traveling with a lot of luggage or with your family. Depending on what time and where exactly you're going however, the ride can cost anything from $30 up to even $55. Our trains offer a much more cost viable option to get into the city. It will take you roughly 16 minutes to get from the Sydney International Airport Station to a central station with trains running approximately every 10 minutes. This option will cost you around $18. There are plenty of places to explore in Sydney and if you do it right, you're going to be taking trains, buses, light rails and even ferries. You can of course use your credit card to tap and pay for transport but if you want to avoid those pesky overseas charges, you're going to need an Opal card which you can purchase and top up at any train station or 7-Eleven. If you're wondering how to get to places, then Google Maps is your friend. It will have all the information you need including the platform you need to get on. Speaking of which, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the difference between T4 in this particular example and the platform number. I used to find this very confusing and would always end up at the wrong platform. The term T4 in this example refers to the train line you are traveling on aka track 4. You see, there are 9 train lines in Sydney and T4 refers to the eastern suburbs and Illawarra line. This is different to the platform number which in this particular example is platform 5. You are welcome. The water that you drink when you turn on a tap in Sydney is filtered to the very high standards set forth by the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines. So rest assured that you can drink our tap water without having to boil it first. Whilst Sydney is a beautiful city with plenty of things to do in the evenings in terms of dining and nightlife, most businesses such as banks and shopping malls close at 5pm on all days apart from Thursdays. That's definitely something you want to keep in mind if you plan to do some shopping. Speaking of shopping, Sydney can also be a very expensive city to live in and if you're visiting then there are certainly ways that you can explore our beautiful city for free. You can for example do one of our many trails or walks of which I especially recommend the Spit to Manly walk. It spans 10 kilometers and will take you around three and a half hours to complete. You will end up at another iconic Sydney location, Manly Beach, and from there you can actually catch a ferry back to Circular Quay. 
But did you know that visiting one of our many museums where you can learn more about our history and culture is absolutely free? There is also a free guided tour that takes you to check out all of our city's main monuments. I cover this and much more in my 5 things that you can do for free in Sydney video which I will include at the end of this video so that you can go ahead and watch that next. Travelling on a budget or just generally like a good deal? Make sure you check out my video covering 15 of Sydney Chinatown's cheap eats below $15. I have of course included that video at the end of this video as well so that you can go ahead and watch that next. Now at this stage of the video, you're most probably already booking that trip for Sydney but before you go, if you found this video helpful, informative or even entertaining in some way, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. It is absolutely free to do but it would just really help my tiny little channel out. I also upload every Saturday so be sure to also turn on that bell notification so that you can start your weekends with me. And if you got to this point of the video, I want to thank you so much for your support. It truly means the world to me. I hope that you have a fantastic day ahead or that you've already had a good day. As always, I will see you soon in the next video.